Welcome to Ridge Life, I'm Tim, and today we're going to be installing this 1.1 cubic foot low profile microwave hood combination. Goes over your stove, uh, fits right in a cubby, very easy to install. And guys, the low profile gives you 19.7 inches from the top of your stove to the bottom of the hood, uh, compared to most will only give you 12.9 inches, you know, for those large microwave hood combinations. So this gives you a lot of, lot of room for, to, for working surface. Um, this is gonna be a really easy install, and I hope you enjoy it. Now, afterwards, we're gonna give you a kitchen tour of our log home build site. You know, you've seen a little bit of it so far, but you're gonna see what the final with a appliances look like here in our kitchen, our log home on Ridge Life, so enjoy the show. We'll start off with a quick unboxing. We've got the uh, mounting bracket, which has step-by-step uh, -step instructions already on the mounting bracket for how to uh, get your low-profile microwave hood installed. We've got some hardware in a package. Um, take off this um, styrofoam here. Of course, we have a couple little br cover brackets, hardware. There's the electrical cable. We'll take this top cover off here sorry that was so loud get this off Ugh. here we go now we can get down to the hardware not too not too much to these things so this should make it pretty easy of course we've got our little turntable here let me get that pushed up there's our glass turntable very large turntable i like that get this out of the way and then we can see what our low profile microwave looks like here get this opened up for you Everyone likes an unboxing, those are pretty fun. All right, we got our microwave hood combination up out. Let's go ahead and set it down here. It's gonna match perfectly to our Whirlpool refrigerator. There we are, that is gorgeous. Got the protective film over it. Okay, we'll get the, uh, I think there's one more. Yeah, a couple more pieces in here. There's the turntable wheel rotating thing. And then we have a, another vent cover. So that's it for the unboxing. Now for the installing. What we wanna do now is find our stud. Uh, we took pictures of this wall before we put the drywall. So if you're building a home, take pictures of your walls and your pipes and your wiring before you put your drywall on and you'll know where all the obstructions are within your wall. If you hold a tape measure up or a yardstick or something in, in the picture, you'll also have heights. So uh, I know that I've only got one stud right here. So I find the stud and then, oh, there it is right there. And then once you find it, you mark it like we have here. So I know I've got a stud here and it's just left of center. Next thing I want to do is measure my center of my cabinet from left to right. So I, I measured it's exactly um, 28 and a half inches wide. So 14 and a quarter we mark right here. And of course I've done that right here as well. So I know center line of my cabinet. I want to do the same thing in the front as well. So I've marked it right here. And that's uh, 15 on either side for the front because it's 30 inch uh, wide hole. So I know exactly where the center is in the back and the front. And I've drawn a line from front to back. So now when I put my template up, I'll know exactly where center line is. Now I'm going to draw a straight line down from center all the way down. I got my level here. Get everything leveled up with center. And I know that my... Uh, um, Oven only goes down 10 inches, so I don't want to go draw below there. So I got everything leveled up. So now I'm just going to stick this in. These, these little slide uh, uh, rulers are awesome. So now I can just slide up and down. Now I've got a now I've got a line, center line. So here's my stud, and here's my center line. This should make this real easy for install. The next step is to take our mounting bracket, get it centered up along the back wall. And there's arrows. Your bracket may be a little different, but there's arrows that show you where center is. And once you have center, now I'm going to mark the hole where my electrical cable goes. Right up there. So that cable comes straight out of the microwave and go up. And now I've got to mark my mounting holes through these front bracket. Super simple. Get those mounted. So now I can drill a hole here. Drill a hole here and then drill the large hole with a hole saw for the electrical cable to come through. The plug's got to come through as well, so it can't just be a small hole. 
Now I use a one and a half inch hole saw to measure the hole. Now I use a one and a half inch hole saw to drill the hole for our electrical wire. Let's go ahead and get that installed. There we go. That'll pop out. We have the plug knocked out for our electrical connection. Now we have to drill the 3 h inch holes in the front for our mounting bolts that will support the front of the microwave. We got these marked out. We got that one. Let's see if I can see this one. There it is. There we are. Now we can start working on the back plate. Since we only have one stud in the center line of our back plate, um, we're going to install one lag bolt in the, the center stud area. And then for the outside edges, uh, if you've got a stud running on the outside edge, you can, you can again, do it that way. But if you don't, you have to use these uh, toggle bolts. So I'm going to drill a uh, 5 inch inch hole on each edge. We'll see where those holes go. That way these toggles can go in the hole and then we can tighten these up on the back plate. So we'll have one of these on each edge of the back plate, and then we'll have a lag bolt in the center in a stud. Have my back plate. I bit these tabs down. These tabs were up earlier to get our top holes. You bend them down to get them out of the way for final installation. And now I want to install my back plate, how it's going to be on the back. And of course, you want to make sure you get all the way up and level. And once you get all the way up and level, then you're going to mark right here is center line and right here is where my stud is and I've, I've marked that. So this will be the hole I get to use for my stud because my stud is just left of center. And then the outside edge holes, this is where our uh, toggle bolts are going to go through. And again, I've marked those right there. So now I can drill my 5 h inch holes for my toggle bolts and get this back plate mounted. So I've got a 5 h inch uh, bit here. I'll set that right up there where the outside edge and make sure I don't mess up my cabinetry there. Let's go through the drywall. Again, I made sure for my pictures of what's behind here, I don't want to get any wiring or any pipes, that's for sure. So now I just come over here, do the same thing on this side, line it right up. Well, the good news is I was right on the edge of the stud there, so I can't, I won't use a toggle bolt. I'll, I'll use a regular lag bolt. I got just enough wood to get that in there. So toggle bolt on this end, lag bolt in the center, lag bolt on the edge. Now I went ahead and started my toggle bolt. That way I can push it in the wall, tighten it up with a Phillips, and we should be good to go. So I got this right up here. Go ahead and find my hole. Push right in, so that, that went in. Now I can get my center line. I'll tighten that up last. I can get my center line for my lag bolt in my stud there. Get that started. And I got a 7 16 driver. You can use a Phillips head screwdriver too if you want. Get that lined up. Oops, sorry. Got that started. Get my next one over here. Get that lined up with the hole. Again. Make sure everything's lined up. There we are. Okay, so now I've got everything. I just want to make sure. Make sure that it's level. Okay, I need to come down a little bit on the way right side which is fine come up on the left perfect all right let's so go ahead and tighten this one up there we go I'll tighten this one up all right now i need to just use my phillips tighten up oops tighten up my toggle bolt and i'll be ready so now i'm going to mount the microwave in its place there's hangers in the back uh, we're going to feed the electrical cable up through the hole, so you can go ahead and grab the cable, feed it up through the hole, pull that up there, and i got to get this, this barely fits now, so i got to get it lined up just perfectly, go in the hole, i got to get it lined up 
the bottom bracket. Okay. Get in there, lift up on it. You got it up. All right. I need you to come down here and hold this up while I put the bolts in the holes on the top. Line up these holes here. And I'm using the bolts with the big washers and again, they're lining up to the holes we pre-drilled through the wood. And this is real simple. Get the electrical cable out of the way. Got my trusty helper down below, holding it up. I push up on the front. All the way, there you go. Push up on the front all the way. I'm gonna get this nice and secure. Okay. Once I get these snug, we'll be able to let go of the front. And we'll see how it looks. Get this plastic off and see how it looks. All right, and let go. Close the cabinets. Take the plastic off and get out of the way of the camera. There we are. Whirlpool, over the range, low profile. We'll get everything cleaned up, get the electrical, we'll get it plugged in, get the stove installed, and we'll show you what this kitchen looks like. Now we're going to uh, plug in our microwave for the first time. I uh, went ahead and drilled a one and a half inch hole in our uh, shelf here. You probably won't have that in yours. You'll have your receptacle in the first section. I had to go in because my receptacle is one step higher. Get it through the hole there. And now let's plug it in for the first time. I hear music. Let's go ahead and see what the inside looks like and get it all set up and turn it on. We've got it powered on. You can see it. We haven't set the clock yet, but check out this feature. Uh, you push the button for open. Ooh, it opens all by itself. Let's go ahead and set this up. So um, we've got to put the, uh, the, little the little wheels that it spins on. Put that right in there. We've got our rotating plate. We'll get that put on there. Centered right up on the little coggy thing. All right, now we can close it. Of course, um, you can see all your... Um, we set the clock, boom, get everything set up, defrost, popcorn, reheat, frozen entree, defrost, all those good things, close it up, and look at that. So the buttons are hidden behind. So you don't get all the, you know, see all the fingerprints and all that, you're gonna open it up, looky there, set everything up with the door open, close it up again, all that's hidden beautiful, and if you need to add 30 more seconds to your cooking, woo, now we're cooking when peanut oil. Of course, to be a vent hood, you have to have a vent, and we have a fan. There's high, low, low, and off. Of course, there's filters under here, and the exhaust is at the top, and then, of course, we've got a light, medium and low and off. Very, very nice microwave hood combo. Time to install our oven here. Let's go ahead and get our 220 plugged in. Now we can push this back all up in here appropriately. See how I already pre-leveled it, so let's hope it stays level. It should fit just perfectly. Keep going, man. Keep going. Keep going. Now we have not put our backsplash up yet, so we still have to get all that in there. So that looks wonderful all the way to the back. So we've got a whirlpool. Above the range, low profile microwave, vent hood combo. Exhaust out the top here, you gotta make sure you have enough clearance. You don't want, if your cabinets stick out farther, you have to buy an adapter to bring out your microwave so it vents out. We've got our Whirlpool um, range oven in here. We've got a Whirlpool refrigerator. We'll give you a kitchen tour right now. Welcome to the finished kitchen in our log home for Grandma Carol here on the Ridge. We are so excited. Now we haven't put the baseboards down on the walls or the uh, trim along the bottom of the cabinets for our beautiful new life-proof flooring. Hopefully you've seen me install that. But we've got a beautiful stainless steel Whirlpool refrigerator, stainless steel Whirlpool uh, oven range, the low profile microwave uh, vent hood you just saw us install. We've got this beautiful farm sink here, uh, recessed with the you know, stainless steel 
it's a single sink, but it's large, very deep, perfect for this uh, log cabin. Of course, we've got a stainless steel dishwasher and the, can the, the granite countertops are just gorgeous. The gray cabinetry uh, matching with the beautiful walls. Again, we, we still have to do backsplash behind the, uh, the stove over there and uh, this flooring turned out great. So I'll give you a close up view of a few of these and then we'll head out. Love these drawers they've given us. Um, Perfect depth, we've got some separators we put in here, but these soft close feature, how it slowly closes all by itself. Love that, Does no, no slamming, no knocking, self-closing, love that. Love this feature they gave us of the hidden trash cans. You come into a kitchen, and our kitchen is in the living room, you know, it's one big walk-in open area here in the log home. You don't want an unsightly garbage pail, garbage can off in the corner. Um, so we have hidden, and of course we have two sections here, one for your uh, composting or recyclables and regular for household trash. Really great craftsmanship, great job, love this feature. Of course having a beautiful farm sink, you know, stainless steel front, lowered one big section to wash all those dishes from a Thanksgiving and Christmas dinner held here on the Ridge Farm log home. We can't wait. Looking out at the beautiful pasture here on the Ridge. Uh, who knows, you're going to see some turkey or deer anytime out here. Love this sink. It's huge. Everything we need. We can't wait to have many, many dinners here in the Ridge log home farmhouse. Of course, everyone has to have a corner lazy Susan. These things make you know storing things in unopportune un places so great. So you can spin it around, put your pots and pans in the back. And I love the work on these cabinetry. Looking at the upper cabinets, you can see we put in some uh, these little trays and a little spinner, little lazy Susans in there. And of course, the cabinetry, the upper cabinetry, has the uh, soft close, self closing feature as well. No slamming cabinets here. Hope you enjoyed watching the installation of our Whirlpool microwave hood combo. Um, went in fairly easy. Follow the instructions or just follow this video. I, I did you step by step. Now if you did have a roof vent or a wall vent, there are separate instructions for that. We just use the standard recirculation that comes out the top. Made it so much easier. Of course we don't have any of those other features. So again, thank you all so much. I hope you've subscribed to Ridge Life. If you haven't already, hit the notification bell to be notified anytime a new video comes out. And as always, I hope everyone has a blessed day and go Ridge Life. Mm -hmm.